now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex. This is the Ramble. And we'll be here until midnight tonight from that city you see below you, New York. It's time now for another program we call The Adventures of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> That's a pretty boring adventure. <laughs> well, okay, it's dull. Okay, you know. You, you don't have a life, do you? I have no life. You have no life, so... That's great. If you have to have your, uh, you know, your uh, identity stolen, somebody will have a miserable life. Right? Yeah. But the great thing is, uh, I don't have to. I don't have to work. Yeah. What was the? Uh, the Beatles had a song. Uh, this is why I hated jobs and with, uh, that magic feeling, nowhere to be or nowhere to go. Yeah. That's uh, that's so true. Where you don't have to. God, I remember when I was a kid, I hated going to school. After school, I hated going to a job. So, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, uh, we spend our whole life spending at least eight hours a day doing something we hate. We hate, yeah. Yeah, now, I never had to do that. And people say to me, well, you know, what's your biggest failure in life? And I say, well, probably that I never worked. You know, I never felt when I was going to do the radio show that I was working. You know, do you feel like when you get on stage, you're working? Uh, if it's going well, it's fun, yeah. But in like, I, I think I actually enjoyed uh, working with you more on radio. That was not like you said; it was fun to be there. It wasn't like the hours were horrible. That was the only thing. I well, hated, but. I did an interview with somebody in San Francisco, and she said, uh, "So, what do you do with the rest of your day?" And my answer, my answer was, when um, ten o'clock comes around, the best part of my day is over. And then I thought about what I had said, and I went, "Boy, is that pathetic!" <laughs> right. you, you know that when I leave my job, it's no longer fun. What? You know, it should be fun, shouldn't it? The rest of yeah, your day, well, you, you're free to do nothing. Yeah. I mean, unless I get late after work, it's really nothing. <laughs> nothing's going on, and that was my entire quest in life to get laid. You know, I, it's every it's every guy. It, you know, women don't want to admit this, but guys are just on a constant quest quest to get laid. Mm-hmm. And those that aren't just have given up. Yeah, you know. But I mean, I just I don't know what it was with me. I I I, I kind of was glad when I had the prostate problems and they radiated them and all of that, and I lost my sex drive because I got my dignity back. Yeah, there's no dignity in just chasing women. <laughs> yeah, but, but we do because that is by nature our job. It is. You know, our job is to inseminate the herd. Uh-huh. Now, women don't like that answer, but the fact is true. And if you look in nature, I mean, have you ever seen two cats having sex? No. Well, I had enough cats that I saw it, okay? And traditionally, the female, like, fights him off, does not want to get laid. <laughs> because she doesn't want to get pregnant. Uh, and um, in our society, women do exactly the same thing. I mean, they make you really pursue them, and you have to really make a convincing argument for them to have sex with you. Am I right or wrong? Mm, yeah, yeah. Because women, by nature, are protecting themselves against pregnancy and whatever, you know. And it is uh, also, if you think about it, an invasion of their body. Oh, yeah. So they're protecting that as well. So women are always, you know, coming up with, uh, don't do that. No, I not. I have to I have to really like somebody to do that, blah, 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 blah. They're not like guys. Do we have to really like the woman to have sex with them? 
If uh, if it were available, we would totally do it with complete strangers. Yes, yes, we would do it with a a, a bagel. You know, I yeah. mean, <laughs> we would do it with anything. And and don't take it as a compliment, ladies, because you know we would fuck mud. <laughs> And, and and I agree with you, women, if you want to say guys are all rats and terrible and horrible because by nature, that's what nature dictates we do. We can't help it. We can't help ourselves. We'd like to, you know. Uh, I Someone wish we, told me that everything men do is predicated on getting set, Like people that become very successful and drive forward, it's because te- it's te- you get more sex the more successful you are. The more money you have, so it's all driven by that. Well, that's why you you find a lot of problems with people who use their power to get laid, and like a, a Harvey Weinstein as an example, uh, who use their power to get laid. Of course, he had to use his power to get laid because there was nothing there anybody would want to fuck. <laughs> he looked like Shrek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, when people say to oh, me, Dennis oh, Miller said <laughs> Harvey Weinstein was. He looked like Shrek with a Priya prism. (laughs) (laughs) What I found about, you know, it's true. It's absolutely true, Larry. I mean, (laughs) come on, let's let's be honest about it. Uh, 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 Harvey Weinstein, uh, when people say, oh, Harvey Weinstein, what a terrible human being. And I said, what else could he do to get laid? You know, (laughs) if he didn't have that power, nobody would have sex with him. He might have shaven more often and lost weight and gone on a diet and done stuff like that to make himself more attractive, but he didn't have to, right? So, you know, yeah. it, it really, um, uh, you know, he sure, go ahead, blame Harvey Weinstein. Terrible for a person, terrible things he did, um, if, if they're all true. And I always put that if because many times pe- men are accused of sexual things they didn't do. Yeah, you know. that's true. And so, um, uh, but he uh, he was a monster. He just looked horrible. I mean, nobody would want to have sex with him unless they said, "You want a part in a movie?" Okay, I'll hold my, I close my eyes, hold my nose, and I'll let you fuck me. Okay. And a lot of women will do that for a part in a movie. <laughs> well, a lot of them did. And then later on, they went, well, you know, he came out in his bathrobe and then showed me his penis. Well, you know, and it, with Harvey Weinstein, if I were a woman and I went <laughs> up to his room, see, to begin with, I wouldn't have gone up to his room because everybody knew about Harvey Weinstein. You don't go up to Harvey Weinstein's room, period. Uh-huh. End of story. Uh, but women did. And they knew what they were getting themselves into because it was no... Listen, I lived in San Francisco, and I'm a guy, and I was doing a radio show, and I knew what Harvey Weinstein was up to. That's how much how, everybody knew. How did he get knew. away with that? He, he, well, he got away with it because everybody kind of just laughed it off. You know, I think there was even a remark made at an Academy Awards ceremony about Harvey Weinstein. There was, yeah. To that effect. And everybody laughed. You know, so I knew it. Everybody knew it. You knew it, right? I think I after that thing on the the award show. Yeah, that's when I found out. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, everybody knew. So now a woman says, "Oh, Harvey Weinstein invited me up to his hotel room. Don't go. I'm sure. <laughs> don't even don't even tell him you're coming. Okay, because uh, he'll jerk off to that." You know, I mean, it, it's just um, everybody knew, and yet these women did it anyway. And so my question is, you knew what you were getting yourself into, and if you didn't, you didn't have any friends who told you, you know? And the minute Harvey Wein, I was going to say, the minute Harvey Weinstein walks into the room uh, without his robe or whatever, totally naked, all you can do is laugh. <laughs> What, what what can you think of that would be funnier or more repulsive than seeing repulsive, Harvey Weinstein yeah. naked? I'm sorry, yeah. Harvey, if you're listening to this and I'm making you feel bad, but fuck you. You know, I mean, what he did <laughs> on the prison radio. Well, the thing is, you and I, 
for instance, have our limits. We will not push a woman into doing anything they don't want to do. You know? No, it's the uh, any sign of uh, rejection or repulsion is just makes me run the other way. Yeah, exactly. Did, if did I feel anyway. they don't want to or I'm making them feel uncomfortable, yeah. then I, I run the other way. The difference between us and Harvey Weinstein is we ran the other way, you know, and we didn't uh, we didn't put up with it. Um, you know, we weren't going to push it to where it couldn't go. So, so we got away with that for years, I guess. We got away with it forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a uh, you know when he was younger, he wasn't half bad looking. I suppose you know there were guys, women that found him attractive and probably were attracted to the power and didn't mind having sex with him because uh, he wasn't disgusting. But I mean, in later years, you'd look at him with this beautiful woman standing, sitting next to him at an award show, and you'd go, "Come on." That woman isn't there for him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he had a brother, right, that was normal. <laughs> I knew his brother. Oh, uh, really? Well, I had this friend, um, um, Walter Sabo, who used to hold these old parties at his house once a year, and he would invite me over to the parties. And uh, Harvey's brother, uh, what was his name, Bob Weinstein, was always there. You know, he was a good friend with Bob Weinstein. Bob Weinstein, I don't think, was uh, accused of anything. If he was accused of anything, it was as a byproduct of uh, of Harvey, okay? Um, because he, he supposedly was not really doing that sort of crap. So, um, but uh, uh, he, he, but you know, they had to close down the whole company and everything. They still have, they're still Miramax, but it's owned by somebody like Amazon. I don't know who bought it up. So, but anyway. They, they actually turned out some decent movies. Yes. Well, what he was, the great thing about Harvey Weinstein is he, when it was Oscar time, he knew how to go out and politicize it. You know, how to really campaign for the award. And so he won lots of Academy Awards as a result of it. And so did the women involved in his pictures, you know. And, um, I mean, one particular woman, one, who was it was in Shakespeare in Love? Uh, what's her name? Pal Paltrow? Paltrow, Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, when it came time to for everybody to hop on the uh, Let's Get Harvey uh, uh, train, uh, she was the first one there. Oh, what a terrible person. It was horrible what he did to me and whatever. Yeah, well, here's what's horrible, what he did to you. You probably fucked him. He gave you a part in Shakespeare in Love and then went out and campaigned for you to win the Academy Award, which you did, which you can use for the rest of your life to get work. All right? And he's a terrible person? You know, come on. You knew what you were doing. Yeah. You know, so don't 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 go around suddenly vilifying it. Oh, that's the only way I got the job. Well, you could have turned around, walked out of the room, and never got the part in Shakespeare in Love. That's your that's your choice. You yeah. didn't. You didn't. So don't sit around after the fact throwing this guy to the wolves. Just my way of thinking. I'm, and I'm not sympathetic towards Harvey Weinstein. He should rot in jail forever. Because you don't treat women that way. You don't force women to do stuff. But on the other hand, a lot of them benefited from it. And then they turned around to vilify him. So, you know. I mean, if I were a woman who went up there, he took off his robe, she, you know, and, and she said, this is totally unacceptable. And he, she walked out then uh, she has every right to get out there and say Harvey Weinstein is a terrible human being, you know? But the ones who stayed because they thought they'd get a job, I'm sorry, you know, you, you have a certain ability at saying no. Um, remember, Lori, I got an old story about Lori Thompson. I won't say who the guy was. Big Hollywood guy, all right? We're doing these... Uh, uh, um, one night stands, HBO one night stands. And so she's in some dressing room. I don't know why she was there. She had been talking to the comedian or something like that because it was somebody we knew. And he leaves and in walks this 
executive, this big, high-powered Hollywood executive. And he closes the door behind him, and he starts to take his clothes off. Jesus. <laughs> and Laura, what, did, what do you think Laurie Thompson did? Uh, laugh. No. She turned around, unlocked the door, opened it up, walked out it, and as she's leaving, turns around and looks at the guy and goes, this is totally unacceptable. Oh, good. Bravo, Lori. Yeah. You know? So that's what they all should have done. You'll have to tell me who that is. <laughs> I can't remember his name now, but he was a biggie. He was a biggie. Jesus. Uh, uh, you know, who probably felt he could do this kind of thing. You know, hey, I'm this big Yeah, obviously big not his first rodeo. <laughs> I, I think he was one of the comics managers or whatever, and he was, uh, I think, uh, I'll, I'll tell you who I think it was, but we'll do that later. Okay. Um, because I, you know, I don't want to upset his relatives or whatever. Um, but that's what you do. You turn, open the door. You know, it's open. Uh, you know, walk out the door, turn around and look at Harvey and his dick and say, this is totally unacceptable. Now you're never going to get that movie part, but, you know, you still be able to work in Hollywood. You know, this is not, he's not going to go around bad-mouthing you because he took his clothes off and then you didn't fuck him. You know, so. Um, that's why Harvey Weinstein is rotting in jail. You know, it was totally unacceptable. But, is he in for life? Hmm? Is he in for life? Uh, considering how long he will live, yes. You know, I think they gave him 100 years or some, Ooh. you know. Um, he, he, no, he's never getting out again. But he had a great life. Had sex with a lot of beautiful women who just <laughs> didn't say this is totally unacceptable. And that's what you do. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that way you don't enable it. So well, uh, absolutely you're enabling it. There's no question about it. Um, sad, really sad. But anyway, so that's, uh, that's the story of, uh, of uh, what happened with uh, Lori. And, uh, and these women should have known better. And then you got another case. You got uh, Kevin Spacey. Accused of myriads of situations that he was taken to court for, and in every single case found not guilty. Not guilty. Can Kevin Spacey still get a job in movies today? Not now. Not now. Why? Because he was accused and charged with something that it was found, at least according to a court of law, he did not do. On four, yeah, the charge equals a conviction in the public's mind. That's yeah. correct. Uh, look at, uh, what's his name, the comedian, uh, Louis C.K. Uh, I always bring him up as a perfect case. Mm -hmm. Louis C.K., I hear he's doing pretty well on the road, however. I hear he sold. Yeah, and he won a, he, I think he won a Grammy for his album last year, two years ago. Yeah, but he, went a, he goes out, still goes out on the road and sells out every venue that he's at. But... The, he had a lot going. He had movies going. He had television TV shows. Show. He, he was producing four or five different TV shows. All that fell apart because three female comics accused him of showing him uh, showing them his penis. Well, what he did, as it was described, was he came out. He said, "I'm going to pull out my penis. I, if any of you, I hope none of you mind." And nobody said, <laughs> and, and nobody said we mind. And he pulled out his penis. So they tell this story, and Louis C.K. really has a hard time finding TV work and movie work. All right, plain and mm -hmm. simple. Uh, that's really it, it, and it got to me because all the, these three women, any one of which had the chance to say, "No, I don't want to see your penis." And he probably wouldn't have pulled it out. So uh, the question is, who's at fault there? I mean, yes, I'm not going to go to a, three women standing in my room and say, I'm going to pull out my penis now if you don't mind. 
Yeah. <laughs> and and I had a penis I could be proud of. You know, nothing wrong with it. You know, um, it's so cute. You cute. You'd want to pet it. Uh, <laughs> But no, but it does seem like an odd thing to do. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, I would never have thought of doing something like that. But if I did, I would think I'm. It's now incumbent upon them to leave if they don't like what I'm about to do, or to say no, don't pull out your penis. But they just sat there and watched. So I, I real really feel sorry for Louis C.K. You know, it's not like it's not like he even raped any of them. He just wanted to pull out his penis. Yeah. I think he's doing well, though, now. Well, he's pulling out his penis in a lot of clubs now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's doing okay, but he's not doing what he was doing. You know, when you've got five TV shows on the air that you're producing, and you've got a movie you just did that is bombing because of the because the movie company wouldn't distribute it once they found out this story of you pulling out your penis... And it just ruined him. So in yeah. the case of Kevin Spacey and Louis C.K., shouldn't we just say, hey, all is forgiven? You know, you went to court, you proved yourself innocent, end of story. You know, there was a case up in Connecticut. There were the cases in England with Spacey. He skated through every one of them. Yeah, that really sucks. He gets acquitted and he's still considered guilty. And by the way, I hear he's an asshole. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Uh, and part of the reason they get convicted in the public eye is because um, he wasn't particularly liked. And so nobody came to his defense. So, and also, well, it's interesting. I heard a lawyer uh, the other day uh, say that a lot of juries will convict a p person if they don't like them. Yeah, yeah. And and so consequently, nobody really came to Kevin Spacey's defense, except maybe me here on this broadcast. But I I don't think that he was ever convicted of doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. So are you going to give him his movie jobs back? No, you're not. You know. So I I I you know I feel in that respect I feel sorry for Kevin Spacey, even though he is an asshole. You never interviewed him. No. No. I, um, once I wanted to, but then I said, hey, he's an asshole. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's just that what we guys have to live with. If, if tomorrow, Larry, some woman you went out with once and maybe had sex with says, oh, Larry uh, Brown raped me. Now, it's only between the two of you. You don't know whether it was rape or not, right? Mm -hmm. But he, they say, Larry Brown raped me. Goodbye, Larry. That's your career. And it's everything, yeah. And if you say, no, I didn't, that's not true. I was very respectful of her. I bought her dinner afterwards or something like that, you know. Um, you're still considered guilty because you were accused. You'll never get. You'll never wash that stink off. So no, it's horrible. Yeah. So I mean, guys are subject to this. A woman could say something that you did to them that you didn't even do. I mean, I had it happen once uh, in my life when I was at, li at Live One Hundred and Five. This father calls me up and says. You got my daughter pregnant. And I said, really? Who's your daughter? And they named the daughter. And I said, never heard of her. Turns out she got pregnant by her boyfriend or some guy she had a one-night stand with. And when her father said, who's the father? She just mentioned the first name she knew, and that was yours, was mine, <laughs> because she listened to me every morning. Oh, really? You know, so that's a perfect example of how, you know, I, uh, you get accused and immediately you're guilty. And I, uh, you know, I think guys should be treated a little better in this kind of situation. So. Yeah, that's, uh, 
That's a horrible crime when you're accused uh, falsely. Well, I went back and I looked at my, my life and thought about all the women I had had sex with. Of course, I couldn't remember all of them. But I just, is there anybody there that would accuse me of this kind of stuff, you know? And there's one or two crazy women I knew that maybe would do it because they're so nuts. But they wouldn't have any reason to because, you know, we had a good relationship and all of that. But, I, you know, you have to do a little assessing. You don't know when somebody is going to come along and go, hey. Uh, well, somebody wants money. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Or not even money. You, you, you have a name and they want to somehow use it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. but, but any guy, guys get accused all the time, and nobody wants to believe the guy. Am I right? They want to believe the right. woman first. And there are a lot of crazy bitches out there, okay? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, and you and I are prone to them, or I was prone to them. I'm not now. I'm just married to one of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I... Um, uh, I'm past that, but in my day, if I still was around and doing shows and stuff like that, I think somebody might have, might come forward and say, "No, oh, he did something to me once," you know. You know, people always say, "Well, in entertainment, God, you guys get to meet so many more women." Uh, true, but they're all most of them are insane. <laughs> most of them are insane, and and you also got to be very careful. Hey, we've run out of time. I just noticed here. We just enjoyed talking so much about the sex life. We're, We're just blowing the day talking about the sex lives we don't have. <laughs> uh, uh, but they're good talking to you again, Larry. Yes, we'll do it soon. Next week, as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. See you, Larry. I see you. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay. Thank you very much, Larry. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. So I just before I went on the air here, I suddenly looked at something and yeah, I might have I might have um, um, something worse than I thought, actually, medically. Uh, there's a thing called light, it's cap of light, that's a whole thing, and it could show that I have myeloma. Yeah. But I do know that I do have uh, uh, <laughs> lymphoma. I do have uh, lymphatic, um, uh, chronic uh, something, something, uh, CLL, okay? That I think I do have because I have a report here that says that I had it. I don't know. I just I I'm I'm getting really upset by all of this and uh, getting upset uh, so much that I hope I can do a show tonight. You know, um, I know that sounds ridiculous, guys, but uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, so anyway, uh, do we have anybody waiting with me? Oh yeah, there are some people waiting. Okay, let me see who's waiting. Okay, we got Josh Wheeler and we got Brian Neary. Here we go. There's Josh Wheeler and there is Brian Neary. And uh, they're coming in. Let's see here. Are they there? There's Josh Wheeler. There's Brian Neary. Hello, guys. How are you? Doing good. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so if I'm a little <laughs> out of it tonight, it's because I'm, I'm bothered by... So I look all this stuff up, you know, and it probably isn't indicative of anything, but it sure bothers me. Anyway, I have that appointment on Monday with the doctor, so we'll see what the problems are, you know. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, there's, this, there's, there's this weird thing that this, uh, this neurologist sent me to the doctor for, the blood doctor for, so they could uh, figure it, uh, figure it out. And, um, uh, it, 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 he sent me to this other doctor, the one that, the bad one. And he did it because he got, did this thing. It was called a light chain or something like that. And he didn't know what it meant and whether it was dangerous or not. And he turned me over to this blood doctor. And then when he turned me over to the blood doctor, 
of course, I had all the problems with him never getting back to me and stuff like that. So, you know, that was that. Uh, but uh, as I looked at those numbers, those numbers are not good and uh, in this light chain thing. And uh, uh, it could mean myeloma. But on the other hand, I have a report here that was taken from that blood test that said that, you know, I have uh, this chronic lymphatic disease. So anyway, I don't know. I just, you know, I, just, I see all this stuff. I don't know what it means. I'm not a doctor. I don't know whether it's good or bad. But it upsets me, you know? Stress, too. Anxiety. Huh? Not knowing. Stress, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know what any of this is. But uh, did the doctors just, like, send this stuff to you and then no follow-up no follow or explanation up. or anything? No, no, no. I actually, a couple of days ago, said, called the outfit and said, could you send me my blood test? Because they never sent it to me. Hmm. So I I got the blood test and there the, the this thing is there too. It's called a kappa lambda ratio or whatever, and it's a light, called a light chain. And who knows who knows? I'm not a doctor, so it may mean nothing. It may mean that it's simply reacting to the fact that I have the other disease. So I don't know. When do you see the the next doctor, the hematologist? Monday. Okay. Hmm. Well, Hopefully nothing you can get some something more definitive. Nothing you can do until then. Yeah. Well, you know something about it being more definitive. I'll tell you. Um, I looked at what my doctor is ordering up the various blood things that he's ordering up, and one of them is this light chain thing. Okay, but he's not ordering up the thing that I have here that was, uh, you know. Uh, the uh, flow, it's called a flow uh, cytometry analysis. He didn't order that up, and that's the one that can tell you whether you have the uh, um, uh, chronic uh, lymph lymphocy lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, and it is a definitive test for that. But I yeah. don't know what this other thing is all about. You know, I mean, could well, this guy's a hematologist, right? That you're going to see Monday? Yeah. There's another hematologist. Oh. And the one I went to, let me put my papers back here. Okay. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm going to that hematologist, but he's, he, he didn't ask for that test to be taken. He huh. wanted the one with the keychain, the light chain, or whatever the thing's called. Kappa light chains or something like that. I don't know much about leukemia other than my well, father. Well, this isn't leukemia. This, father... would, this would mean I had myeloma, have myeloma. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what any of it means. But all mm -hmm. I know is that that original doctor should have called me immediately if he saw anything unusual. Yep. Yep. And, you know, should have. And didn't. Should have. And, and that, that was ridiculous, you know, so. Yep. So, I agree. Yeah. So, if I'm dead in about a year, uh, sue this guy, will you, for me? Sure, no problem. You know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what any of it means. Well, um, hopefully this guy will explain better to you. Yeah, yeah. So, Options, and if you do nothing, probably won't, you know. You're right. My father died of leukemia at the time. This is 31 years ago, 32 years ago. They didn't have a cure for the leukemia he, he had. Uh, they know that it was from being in contact with petrochemicals that contain benzene, the chemical. Mm -hmm. yeah, so now they have a cure for it. They have a cure for a lot of leukemias. So Well, leukemias are this leukemia, the chronic leukemia, which is probably not what your father had. Probably not. Uh, is, uh, is quite curable. You well, know, he got not, my not father. Curable, for... Not curable, but... You know, it doesn't present a great danger. My father, for two years, got blood transfusions to keep him alive instead of going through the chemo treatment, which he did at the end of his life and didn't do any good. So. Yeah, yeah. But that was 30 years ago. At that time, they didn't know as much about it. So. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm a little upset tonight. So I, 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 I think you I, can all imagine that. And so what I'd like to do, uh, Josh... Hmm. Would you like to take over the show for most of the hour for me? Well, if you need me to, I can. Yeah, why don't you? And I'll uh, I'll make you a uh, 
I'll give you the job of being a co-host, and therefore, if other people call, you can let them on, okay? Same fee as usual. Okay, and I'll see everybody towards the end of the hour, okay? Let me mm -hmm. just uh, try and mellow out here. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Wheeler. Take it, Josh. Go ahead. How y'all doing? <laughs> Hi, Josh. <laughs> Did you get the co-host uh, set up? I didn't see it flash on the screen there, but maybe I missed it. Let me see here. Are you? I I did it. You know. Okay. Well, maybe oh, I let me do it again. Skip. Let me do it again. Here we go. There we go. Josh Wheeler is. Oh, change. Oh, no, I don't want to change host. No, I want to make him a co-host. Uh, make. Oh, it just says make host. It doesn't. Uh... Oh, withdraw co-host permission. You have the. You are the co-host. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I probably just missed it. If okay. somebody calls, it'll pop up. All righty. Yeah, I, it looks like I've got more stuff here, so we should be good. We will uh, let you take a break. We'll see you in a little bit then. How's well, everybody I, else doing? I feel for him. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, what I was going to say was just, uh, you know, we'll let him relax and clear his mind a little bit and sometimes that's the best the best thing for people i'm sure that you know whatever he's got going on he's going to get some good information on and then feel better and uh you know i can i understand um it's not the same thing here of course but you know i've kevin knows uh because i've talked to him a lot but you know i was changing jobs and you know leaving to go back uh, to where I used to work, and we've been working on it for a while, and so today was my last day where I was, and then I'll take a week off, and I'm heading back, but mm. this this uh, mm. process went on for forever, um, you know, and I was in a tough spot where I was at, and I didn't want to stay any longer, and, you know, it was something that I really wanted to do and everything, and it was taking forever, and so I guess what I was saying was I get the anxiety over, you know, I, I want to know and I want to know now, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to know right now. I want it done. I don't want another minute to go on. And then, you know, and then you finally get there and then you get, you know, you go do like pre-employment stuff and, you know, it's like I have no reason to believe that I'll fail this test or that test or this test. But and until somebody gets an email that says you passed. You know, you don't know. I mean, did they lose your drug test results and you got to go? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just don't know until you know. So, I, I'm, again, it's not the same thing as mm -hmm. health issues. But, I mean, it is a major life change, Yeah. you know, and it was something that was desired. And I was going to take a week off in between, but I could only do it if I got word by a certain time. And if not, we were going to cancel our trip. You know, I mean, it was just mm -hmm. like... You know, and it went to the last minute, you know, so I, I get it. I mean, everyone has, you know, anxiety like that. And when you get to the point where you want to know something, you know, you want to know now. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it except sit there and wait, which is the worst thing. So, you know, I think but... the worst thing is not like like you said, but I think the worst thing. And when it comes to medical things that are serious mm. are the unknown you know, if, yeah, if, I, got, well, I, mean, if I have a deadly disease, tell me and let's let's see if we can treat it or something. Yeah, you know, again, and I mean, you know, you know, doctors have lots of patients, but you're the one patient, you know. So you just, I mean, you know, to you, that's the most important thing. Same thing uh, with your job, you know, real in your life, it. you know. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I I get it, and I and I understand. I mean, look, I'm not. You know, a big fan of uh, doctors either because this is, you know, this is kind of what they do. They bounce you around, and you know, it's kind of yeah. a mess. But that's a whole other <laughs> conversation. But we'll we'll get going with you know something. If anyone's got anything they want to talk about, you can let me know, or uh, people can call up and well, excuse me, talk about whatever they would like. I you know, I suppose that the large story of the day is probably the State of the Union from last night. 
Um, I did not see the entire speech. Uh, did not have time today uh, because of the wrap up things that I did and stuff like that. Um, I've seen uh, decent parts of it and a lot of the analysis. I didn't stay up last night. I had to get up early in the morning. Uh, go in. My last days at my current job were also uh, uh, physical inventory, mm. which you know is a big deal at most places, um, yeah. especially a large manufacturing plant that has you know thirty to forty million dollars of inventory on site. So it's a pretty big deal. So I was up early, so I didn't see it all. But you know, I haven't really gotten a very good uh, read on how people across the country received it. Or anything. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts. I mean, I heard parts of it. Um, you know, the parts that I heard, the substance was 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 very good. I I kind of got some initial feedback. I think here and there from what I saw in the media that you know it was pretty pretty positive. You know, it was a pretty strong speech. I think. Um, you know, parts that I did see. You know, and I sent these guys something earlier. I mean. I am personally disappointed that these State of the Unions have kind of in the last couple of years really moved into like clown show territory. Uh -huh. I mean, with people with their ridiculous outfits and their yeah. their yelling and their their whining. I, I mean, it's it's like a uh -huh. high school auditorium. Uh -huh. And, you know, to me, it's really sad. I mean, it's yeah. it's honestly it makes me a little ashamed and a little bit sick to even think about it. I mean, you know, this, this Marjorie Taylor green garbage and a few of the others, you know, I find it absolutely ridiculous, you know, that, that grown people period act that way, let alone elected members of Congress. I mean, I Frank, just, I don't get frankly, it. I saw the fact that they were idiots and they made themselves look like idiots. But the problem is most of that side of the, the aisle were a bunch of idiots that backed it. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. And it's that whole mentality, you know, of not following the rules, you know, I, I, you're full and of shit. being obnoxious and, and all that type of stuff that's on that side and it's like it's like and they back it. encouraged they you back know? It. Yeah. of arms ought to escort her out uh, yeah. yeah i mean you know i don't know but this this whole thing or no I should you say this whole thing sort of started i remember ao in the mid 90s or i'm sorry you know during the Clinton presidency, maybe it was early on. I don't. I don't remember. I, you know, I, I think I was in maybe like in middle school or something. And I remember that we had a congresswoman here uh, in the district that neighbors mine. So I knew who she was pretty well. I was following politics really closely when I was young and everything. And her name was Deborah Price. And uh, one of uh, Bill Clinton's very early State of the Unions. I don't. Know, it was the first one, second one, or whatever. You know, she did this thing that at that time was unprecedented, unprecedented, where uh, he came in and as soon as he started talking for the speech, she was the first one to do it. She got up and she just walked out, Ugh. you know, so she, she refused to attend the State of the Union. And that's kind of like the first one that I personally remember. You know, maybe there were other things or something that happened, you know, but that's kind of one that I remember where, you know, it was just he was just so terrible. You know, an, um, he was a completely immoral man and, you know, and all these things and just so liberal and, you know, was going to just ruin the country. Right. And, you know, that was her thing was she just got up and walked out. And then I think the year after there were one or two other people that joined her, you know, or whatever. And and it started kind of at that level. And now look where we are. Now they don't get up and walk out. They they attend the speech. You know, and they're almost excited to attend it so they can make a scene. You know, and I, I just don't. The Democrats you know, are at fault too. What's that? The Democrats are at fault too. I think that the time that Nancy Pelosi ripped up uh, Trump's speech behind him was wrong. Yeah, I don't. 
I don't remember. Yeah, maybe I'm not I some agree. Kidding. I'm trying to think. I seem like I do remember something about that. Yeah, look, I don't I don't like that stuff either. I mean, yeah, I'm certainly not going to say that one party or the other, you know. I mean, I think certainly the Republican Party has seemed to be much worse and more obnoxious. Oh, absolutely. And and things, you know, but maybe that's just because it's it's been very recent. But I don't care for any of it, you know. I mean, personally, I mean, it's it's. If you don't like what someone has to say, fine. If you disagree with them politically, uh, substantively, policy wise, whatever, fine. Hear what they have to say, and then say what you have to say, within the the guise of the rules of decorum, of you know, simply waiting your turn, you know, and and all that kind of stuff. It's it's just. I don't know what, you know, what made them want to turn these kinds of speeches uh, or events into that. I mean, I don't, I don't get it, you know, and I mean, I don't know, you guys tell me, I mean, you know, because you live in different parts of the country than I do, and people live in different parts. I mean, is that, is that what, I mean, do Americans like that now? I mean... Are, well, are some do. People? Obviously, some do because that's yeah, what right. they want. They want they want people to stand up and stir up shit, and that's you know been the right. the uh, mo, MO of that particular yep. group. And yep. when that happens, they sit there and they applaud. I mean, if you saw some of the interviews afterwards, yep. um, they were all right there saying, you know, yeah, it was a great, you know. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they did it. And then you, I don't know. Did you see the uh, Republican response? I did not. That I was heard, a freaking creep show. I heard a little bit about it, but I did not. That was a creep show. Yeah, that was. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. That was bizarre. Sort of what I heard, right? You know, and it, I'm. Uh, I thought I was going to have to write a check for 19.99 to uh, you know 19.99 a month to send to this this gr lady because she was. Uh, <sighs> The, the country is going to crap, and you know it. Yeah, you know, and and it was it, it, and it was from her kitchen, and it was you know the whole staging thing and everything else. It was, it was almost the opposite of what they were doing, you know, at the dais. But it was, it was, it was just bizarre, hmm. and and it was backed. It was completely backed by. Yeah, all I don't, that. I don't understand it, and you know. I guess the other thing I want to ask you guys, too, is their message, the Republican Party, you know, the current Trump Party, their message for the upcoming campaign seems to be that America is terrible. You know, that exactly uh, what they said, that that we're weak, um, we're that our military is the terrible, world. that our economy is terrible, that our education, everything in America is bad, bad, bad. It's negative 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 and again i ask is that really what people think or want to hear i personally don't think that it is because that meant they haven't been winning anything you know i mean i, I think the country's it's, in pretty good shape because it survived trump <laughs> and it's the whole savior you know it's the whole make america great again right, right. he was coming to save the day right and then he had four years and we went to somebody else, and now here it is again. I'm we're we're gonna save the you know the the uh, we're gonna save America, and it's like, well, what are you saving us from? Uh, you guys have as much chances you know as as everybody else does, and they don't do shit. So yeah, yeah. and I mean you know I guess what I'm saying there too is, you know, I just don't understand how I mean 15, 20 years ago, or really even longer. I think I told you guys, you know, last Saturday, the week before, whatever. Like, this is what the crazy left wingers used to say. You know what I'm saying? America is just terrible. We're we're war criminals, and we're our our military is is just crazy, and our economy is is all the capitalism run amok. And I mean, we just we hate America. You know, we hate what it stands for, and it's and now it's like flip flopped, and. You have the far right basically saying the same thing, you know. I mean, you know the the 
the Speaker of the House is out there, you know, bragging about how they, they get this budgeting, you know, where they're cutting 8% from the FBI and, and 7% from the Department of Justice and 10% from the EPA. And it's like, well, who's, who's defunding the police now? You know, I mean, you guys are the ones arguing for and, and working through cutting all the the paint the the budgeting to enforcement agencies and then in the next breath you say well there's nothing wrong with the border laws we have on the books we just don't enforce them and then that that applies to all laws and you're cutting enforcement agencies so i just don't know that they're messaging personally for the next you know what do we got here six eight months is going to be negative, 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 negative every day. And people are going to approve of that and, and want to vote that way. I think they're going to wear people out with telling them how terrible America is nonstop for the next six or seven months. Maybe I'll be wrong. I don't know. We won't find out until November, right? But I mean, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, do you, is that what you guys see? Because I just see negative, negative negative we don't see as much negativity in california we're all you know fairly close to each other the three of us in it as far as mileage goes <laughs> yes. yeah you know, yeah so uh, we'll I mean, that i see know, a lot of negativity yeah that. yeah even even these same same story with all these you know the elections that just happened you know these guys are just the just blasting each other, and it's like, okay, so you spend all this money and, and these commercials to blast that person about all the bad stuff, but then they never say anything that they're for, you know? And it's just like this attack, these attack commercials all the time. There's nothing like saying, you know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, in. go ahead, Kevin. They're sucking it in. That's, you know. I, right. Like I was saying about the other night, I don't know, you weren't on probably, I don't know if you watched it, but I was kind of talking about what I saw at the polls uh, when yeah. I was working there, and it yeah. was just, it was insane, and it, I thought it was <laughs> calmed down, but it has not calmed down. It's yeah. the same, if not, well, at least the same. It hasn't eased up a bit, at least in my part of the world. Yeah. And... And, and this is a very, uh, I would say it's a, you know, 70-30 county, but you wouldn't know that. You would think it was a 70-30 G, you know? Yeah. And it, you know, I, <laughs> you look around the country, you can, you can take samples from everywhere, and I'm sure you see that. But if you go down south, you're going to see it. it's going to be a 90-10 that way. Well, yeah. And, you know, you've got you, – you've got, those numbers that are going to get all skewed up. I don't know. It, it, it's hard to even predict what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, you know, I think, you know, that I've told you before, I, I live in, in the County that I think was Trump's top County in, in America, you know, I mean, it is right. like a 92, 93% Trump to Biden County last, last election. I mean, I mean, more people, I mean, he, he got, you know, more votes here than, you know, percentage wise than really anywhere that I looked and I looked all over the place, but I went in and I mean, you know, in this County, I mean, it was like, you know, 10,000 people for Trump and like 200 for Biden or something. I mean, it was, you know, it was crazy. So I live in an area that's like that. And I think, you know, we've talked before about you know like i've told you before i mean even to this day i can drive to the grocery store and you know the next town over and back and i'm still passing you know 40 trump flags yeah you know <laughs> on you know i mean like i said i've even told you guys before at least half of those they don't even fly the american flag on their pole anymore they took it down and they fly the trump flag yep yeah okay yep. fine I had, have, the right I, had to have, to. I had to have somebody take one down he drove into the election office yeah with a flag on his thing i said take it down yeah it's electioneering you can't do that so either right. that or park 100 feet over there he yeah. didn't want to park is your so state, he took it down is your so, state split uh, uh josh because the northern part of your state is blue 
I mean, fairly, but only in sort of the northeast, really only Cleveland, Toledo, mm -hmm. Youngstown. You get west of those, though, you have a huge expanse that's open of pretty much all rural for a farmland. Okay. And then in the central area where I live, you know, I mean, if a Democrat carries Ohio, for example, in a presidential election, they had high turnout, you know, in Cleveland, Toledo, Youngstown, Columbus, and Cincinnati, basically. Okay. They get all their votes from there. And then what makes them carry it is in those sort of suburban, half rural areas, you know, they pick up a lot of the independent, you know, type voters. But, you know, Trump won here the last, you know, a few times and, you know, Bush won, you know, once, I believe. I think he split that. Obama carried the state, you know, but but the particular county that I live in is very, very Trump. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just like I've showed these guys, I think driving around in the development that I live in, like I said, I mean, just in this, just development, it's, it's, you know, there are more, I, I know that there are more Trump flags flying in this development than there are anything else that includes the American mm -hmm. flag that includes a Cleveland Browns flag that includes a <laughs> high state Buckeyes flags, right? <laughs> well, that's you know what I'm saying? And you can get in the car and in 24. 20 minutes be at Ohio Stadium at the Horseshoe. That's how close we are. So, okay. I mean, it, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's amazing to me that what they think of the country is just absolute negativity. I noticed it the first time, you know. I mean, I know you guys all did too, but I, I just remember one time – Right after he got elected, maybe it was even during the transition where that Stephen Miller guy that worked for him was on Meet the Press or something. <laughs> I mean, he was just, you know, I mean, acting like America was just, I mean, like it was gone. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just could not believe the negativity. And I mean, it 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 kind of drives me crazy. I mean, what they used, like I said, 10 or 15 years ago, these same exact people were the love it or leave it, you know. Get on out of here if you don't love America. I, I mean, and now they act like they hate living here. And I mm -hmm. I don't understand what their deal is. I mean, look, economically, the country is leading the world. Militarily, the country is leading the world. You still have more rights here as far as, you know, human rights than anywhere, really, in the world. I mean, the educational system and the overall you know, as far as our our research and our, our universities really, you know, leads the world. I mean, look, we have problems, okay? We have issues. We have things that need addressed, but that's that's life. That's everyday normal functioning of your life and of a of a nation. So I don't know. I just I don't know that this message is gonna bring them success and i hope it doesn't right i mean because you know that would be in my opinion bad yeah. but, you know i i don't i don't know and i think biden is gonna present a positive message and i think that as we move forward the contrast between those two will become much you know more clear than it is now and I think over time, as people have to choose between one or the other, I'm hoping that, you know, they'll choose the positive message. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you're seeing in California. I mean, you know, so, I mean, did your elections go any particular way politically? Or I don't know how much was on your ballot, really, or anything? Or was it just kind of, nah, it was just a primary Trump one, you know, that you expected yeah. that. It was just <clears> a lot of that local were coming stuff. to vote were crazy. A lot of local stuff, but yeah, he, he won. Yeah. Right, which, you know, I mean, you know, we knew it was understandable. I mean, I said... Well, I won't say that, though, because I uh, haven't seen... They haven't, you know, they're still opening up the mail ballots. And probably, yeah. Well, by today, they may have finished it, but I saw that um, some of the local people that were in close races took over and finished off, but um the 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 measures and things like that came in but i don't know what the uh what the uh 
local percentages were for the national stuff. Um, I could probably look real quick here and find out. Yeah. The heck of it. But oh, he's trying to get in. Uh, he's on. I see him now. Oh, now I see him. I don't yeah. Know if somebody let him in, but I I must have. I was looking the other way just for a second, and then he just showed up. But oh. Yeah, I don't know. How you doing, Tony? How you doing, Josh? Good. Yeah, I, you know. So you know, we'll see. But I mean, I I'll sit down and watch the the speech, you know. But I you know, I saw a lot of parts, and I mean. Uh. I thought it was a pretty damn good speech. He came out like he was going to do some shit and, uh, you know, fired up. And he, you know, he may have stuttered to hear a few here and there, but, you know, I don't look at that as a, was a, a fault. I uh, he did pretty good considering, you know, I expected a lot of, a lot worse than what he came out. And again, I wasn't watching exactly the whole thing because I was working at the same time and you drive around and watch it on YouTube. But, uh, yeah. He, uh, yeah, I he seemed to get the points across, and, and, yep. he, and he also shoved a little bit down their throats while he was doing it too, which was kind of nice to watch. I, I like it. Little, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead, Al. You're fine. No, no, I didn't want to. Uh, Kevin was still talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. Ooh, your Turn mic. your volume down. Yeah, yeah maybe just really bit. over my. Wow. Okay, that what happened? Uh, okay. I sent yeah. a couple of you guys the. They had like a, they had like a little montage yeah. of all the funny stuff, and uh, when you saw that stuff, I mean, he was really like the other guys say, like I said last night, he seemed, seemed very alert, shit. good sense of humor, and right on top of it, when those guys would, you know, uh, cheer or, or boo, and then he he went right back at him and say, oh, you, oh, you don't want that two trillion, three trillion dollars, you know, we'll we'll take that, I'll, I'll put it. Other yeah, you don't like that tax cut? <laughs> we'll take yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't like yeah. the bill that you reply, you know, you you were uh you uh bipartisan bill? Right. Well, what do you mean you don't like it? You guys voted for the damn thing. Yeah. It's kind of shoving it down their throats going, you know. Yeah. Fuck you very much. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean his point that, you know, you you strongly and proudly voted against our infrastructure bill and then showed up to cash my check. Yeah, well, that's a fair point. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, know I mean, you, you 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 were you were not just against this bill. You were strongly, openly, vocally against it. You made a scene when you voted against it, and then you know you made sure that you showed up when we built your new bridge, your overpass yeah. over the railroad tracks, or whatever. You know, I mean, look, that's fair. I mean, you know, uh, facts are facts. Okay, I mean can't can't change that so yeah i just you know curious about what people thought you know i mean i i think that his message moving forward will will probably overshadow their negativity i hope we'll see i mean yeah you know from what i heard so far of the speech and what i heard of some of the analysis he performed fine you know he performed well he didn't uh pass out or he didn't have to take a nap you know halfway through there wasn't like a break or an intermission or he didn't didn't freeze you know, up anything like that i mean you know i've gotten a little bit sick of people acting like you know because he hit the age of 80 that you know he's gonna die at any moment i mean come on folks i mean have some respect just i mean what what you know difference does that make in a way i mean if you want to weigh that criteria for yourself personally that's fine each voter has the right to to choose the criteria whatever they would like i mean you know it's your vote you can weigh it however you want but that narrative is you know really a little worn out with me i mean if there were 10 people you had to choose from perhaps make a bigger deal about that but look it's clear that we there aren't 10 people to choose from there's two okay and that's who he is and look at the other option you know separated by less than 36 months or something if i remember right so i mean it's 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 you know it's it's a little ridiculous but you know i i don't know i mean you know trump's deal going forward with the negativity and you know, all the garbage that he's going to come with, which is only going to get worse as the summer goes on. You know, we'll see where it goes. 
obviously he's not going to move any of his people. We know that, and that's fine. He has a 35%, if you will, but that, that's not going to get him elected in the general election. You know, I, I will be interested to see what happens with the supporters that weren't for him and, you know, were supporting Nikki Haley, for example. You know, I've seen some early evidence that a lot of those folks are considering, you know, a, a, a Biden vote or or sort of a no vote, you know, like a staying at home, which, you know, them not voting for Trump is virtually a vote for Biden, in my opinion. So whatever they want to do, you know, but uh, I mean, she don't kick sideways, you know, so how'd that work out for her? I mean, but I think we knew this was happening. I mean, I said a year ago, there he'll be the nominee. There's no way. And a lot of people argued that. And, oh, I don't know. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I could just, like I said, I could just tell from my neighborhood, these folks are not changing their minds no matter what, you know? Yeah, okay. Here we go. Uh, my volume better? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You sound fine. Yeah. And if you got something to say, go right ahead. No, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. And I was and I was talking over Kevin, and that was wrong. So no, you're fine. Yeah, no, everyone, uh, pop in, say what you have to the, say. Uh, yeah, they have. Uh, <laughs> Biden was at ninety one point oh seven percent so far, <laughs> so that tells you. you for know, your I, I in just California? The, no, just for this county. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. okay. I mean, now, Trump or Biden? Like, you said Biden. Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of the Democratic yeah. primary yeah. vote, you mean? Yeah, and I'm looking for the other one. Yeah, I mean he has. I mean he has the support of. But that's what I mean by the noise. You know, you the know. noise is still yeah. there, and that's the problem. I think for the most part. So Here if you uh, in California, Trump was eighty-one point eight three percent. Sorry, go oh, ahead, Alan. That's okay. No, I, I just wanted to make a point that I, I think California is probably like Ohio. If you take the four major metropolitan areas out, we'd be a red state. Sacramento, San Francisco, that's Los probably Angeles, true. San Diego. Yep, that's probably true. Uh, yeah, because there are of... large areas of California, I believe, that are, you know, the polar opposite of the oh, you absolutely. Know, the whole Los Central Angeles Valley. Whatever. Yeah, the whole Central Florida. Valley. 26, Which is weird, 11, there's a lot of Latinos there. Yeah. I mean, I you know, but I don't know how the population there, I mean, I know a little bit, is kind of centered in those areas and whatnot. And when you get out of those areas, I'm sure it's relatively, you know, white uh, and uh, crisp. Well, it's farming, you know. that sort of thing out there. Yeah, yeah so, you know, uh, older crowd or whatever, maybe. But, I mean. 26, 2611 votes to 1990 in our county. Hmm. So, so it was almost 50 50 yeah. really right. um but yeah you but know. yeah i mean but you know that's the thing is you know like i i had been saying really for a year is i mean there were you know eight ten people running for the republican nomination you know at, at one point or whatever but like i said i had i never saw a single flag yard sign uh, bumper sticker, a homemade sign in the window, or anything for any candidate, not one other than Trump. I mean, everywhere that I've been, I I never saw, I mean, as, as remember even a year ago or so, remember how, oh, it was DeSantis, DeSantis, right? I mean, I never even saw a single sign for, I mean, a little sign, a little bumper sticker, anything. You know, the little cardboard ones you can get that you can just throw in your window or something. I never saw even a single one for anyone other than Trump. I mean, not not one. So, I mean, I just, I, I, and, and, and even getting out of my area and going around, you know, Columbus, Ohio, and the suburb areas, you know, uh, some of your more upper class areas, you know, your Westervilles and your Delawares and things where it's predominantly white, it's predominantly upper class, $100,000 a year and above, you know, incomes, uh, 
a lot of private schools in the area. I mean, you're conservative Republican voters. I mean, even driving around in those areas, I never saw. So I'm not just saying it was just in my little neighborhood, you know, where obviously Trump is king, literally, to these people. It it was everywhere that I went. I never saw anything. And those people aren't moving off that. But I, I don't know that that message that is just going to carry for them, that everything in America is terrible, that our military is terrible, you know, that that our education terrible. You know, immigrants are overrunning the place. Everything's just terrible. And, you know, I mean, just bad, bad, bad. I just don't, I don't know that that's really the message. I mean, it, it's, it kind of worked for them in 2016. I mean, of course, you know, but really, I mean, he didn't even win the popular vote in that, in that election, right? So, I mean, it's not as if, the country really felt that way. He got just enough to win, you know, and that was their message then. And since then, politically, he hasn't made any gains. He lost the next election, and his party lost many other or large chunks of their national elections since then. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know that polling really is relevant right now with that. I mean, you know, just look at the abortion issue in Ohio. I mean, everything that I just told you about the state of Ohio, right? But then when we had an abortion initiative on the ballot to, to codify it, basically, into the state constitution, it passed overwhelmingly. I mean, it was 72-28 or 70-30, 69-31, something, I mean, overwhelming, right? And And you know that a lot of those Trump voters you know, hardcore Trump or at least their wives or something when they went into that secret voting booth, right? Where you don't have to tell anybody how you felt or how you voted, you know, and no one knows they hit that old yes for the amendment button, right? I mean, they didn't have to defend it to anyone or how they talked about it in church or anything like that. Nope. I'm in the booth. No one knows what I'm doing. I'm voting yes. You know, what I mean? so yeah. you know that's going to be a big deal. I think coming up. Also, I mean, we also saw that in several other states. You know, I mean, Kansas and other places when it was on the ballot. You know that it was passing overwhelmingly, and you know he's going to run around and brag about how he's the one that did away with it. Yet, as soon as all these things went to the democratic process, state constitutional amendments, ballot initiatives, things like that, they're overwhelmingly passing. So I don't think people are as proud of it as he would like to think that they are. You know, I don't think that they're going to be like, oh, Trump did that for us. Let's we got to vote for him again. Hell, if anything, he's either wrong or even if he's right. They're going to be like, well, we already got what we wanted. We don't need him anymore, you know. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, anything else anybody wants to say about the speech? Go ahead, Tony. Or, I mean, not, not about the speech. I was going to ask you, Josh, what you thought. Of, and, he, and all the guys. Who do you think he picks for VP Trump? You know, I don't know, honestly. Has Scott. anybody got anything? That's what I think, too. Yep, I think Scott. Well, I, he's hear, I missed him. I'm sorry. I, I said Scott probably. He's the only one that's really. Oh, the one who on, just loves jumping him under so the much. desk for him. <laughs> yeah, the one who just loves him so much, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and I'm, I'm I looking at the state results, and it, it's interesting because what you know Alan was saying was that the the state is pretty even. The it was sixty five percent reporting, eighty nine percent Biden, mm -hmm. and seventy eight percent for uh trump wow so it, it's pretty interesting when you think that you know california is this big blue state it's not mm -hmm. oh i would agree with that right yeah. i mean i i uh you know I you and i was a little bit uh, you know i've talked there. before about um how there's that contingent out there in california and i like you said i i even met that one girl that i took a class with one time who lived was living out there and is like one of the leaders of this movement to break off a section of California and form its own state within it. You know, Jefferson. 
Yes, sir. The state of Jefferson. Remember state right. Of Jefferson. You know, and, and they want to call it the state of Jefferson because it's just so Thomas Jefferson. And I mean, you know, it's like uh, if you had I drive by it all the time and I go pick up my daughter, it's right, right. there on the side of I-5. Yeah. You know, and it's like if you really think that's what Jefferson stood for in some ways, um, uh, you know, but hey, look, I, I don't have time to explain you know, this to every fucking person one at a time, you know, so, I mean. But it is, you know, I go to Lodi and there the guys driving by with the big trucks with the two big ass flags going up, you know, and Absolutely. and it's like, why are Lodi. you falling for him when, what did he do for you? Four years and you're still in Lodi. <laughs> Lodi, you know, it's like. Yeah. Uh, and I'll bet you they wouldn't work for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I the mean, one point that I get, you know, you get. If he's such a, a guy for the worker, look what he's done to workers over the years. Yeah, well, the whole the whole Central Valley, which is there's a lot of Latinos, uh, like I think Brian said, is a red at red area of the state. Yeah. And uh, you know, when COVID was really bad, they were the last part of the state to bring the numbers down. Also, you know, yep. But a lot of states were like that. Remember, they would show the map and they would show red in the major cities. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, blue in the major cities, and then you just see all the red coming around. You're like, well, what's that population? Because wow, there's a lot of stuff, you know, land wise, those counties are big, but population isn't there. But right, well, a lot of the people that are, that are in the Central Valley don't have the right to vote in this country. Yeah, that's gonna say, okay. oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah, I mean, it's just you know. <laughs> Look, it's going to get more and more interesting. I mean, we're getting closer, and, you know, obviously the field's been narrowed down. We know exactly what our choice is going to be. Yeah. So, you know, people are going to have plenty of time to think about it. I just don't know that a completely negative message that's going to get beat like a drum for the next, you know, seven months is what, turns people on but you know if we're wrong or if i'm wrong then we'll know in seven eight months but you know i i don't know i i hope not because i think that's terrible personally and i think it you know i think it kind of flies in the face of what has historically worked and you know really to me against a kind of an american you know idealism or exceptionalism i mean you know nothing to fear but fear itself you know we do these things you know not because they are easy but because they are hard and you know a, a new day in america and i mean you know i mean from fdr to you know kennedy to johnson on a, on through to reagan i mean they didn't approach it in that way i mean even things that were negative and terrible you know, Johnson found a way to make into a positive. This is a problem. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it now. You know, we have talked long enough about civil rights in this country. We have talked for a hundred years or more. And, you know, now it's time to, you know, I mean, they found ways to frame the narrative as we are improving, you know, not that we're in the toilet. I mean, and look, you know, who had more turmoil to face than someone like Lyndon Johnson, you know, in 63, 64, you know, and I mean, he framed his narrative as, you know, a, a, a reset and, you know, we have all these problems and we're going to fix them. I mean, the nation was in turmoil, a presidential assassination, you know, race riots by the day, Vietnam. law enforcement that wouldn't enforce the laws because they were racist. Uh, you, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it was a, a terribly bloody summer. I mean, Vietnam, right. You know, on the, on the cusp, I mean, I don't get, you know, where this, this narrative will work, but I mean, maybe it will, but I, I really hope not because again, I think it, it, it flies in the face of American ideas and what, you know, what we've always done to get ourselves through to the next step. Yeah. And, you know, like Trump. it or not, this country has continually been 
on a slow but steady arc of improvement and expansion of freedom and prosperity and success. So the line on the graph might not be pointing as upward as you want it to be personally, but it is pointing upward. It has you know, always been pointing upward. Trump said that you know? the United States is now a third world country. I don't right. Know. I, 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 I don't, I just can't understand how that narrative will sell in the general election. Again, I, if he says it to his yeah. people, I, I mean, I'm sure it's amen, preacher, you know, preach on. Right. But the general election is, you know, I just don't. <laughs> did, you, did you have something, Tony? Yeah, you know, I was going to say, you know what I'm thinking? And this is just my, how, he, how he's thinking. When he says third world country, because what he's trying to drive home is the fear of the, because I see it here, Josh, when I'm in the post office, that you can see the Trump is there. All they talk about is the migrants, like they're taking over the country. And that's what he's saying, third world country. He's sliding it in like that indirectly, I think. <laughs> I, yeah, look, I can believe that. I mean, there's no doubt that that's part of their, you know, unspoken words. Yeah, that they're, it's their secret racism. That's not really. That's exactly yeah, it. You know, you know and, and look, don't get me wrong. I mean, I can understand how that is a legitimate concern and a problem and needs fixing and i get it but again you know look at the way lyndon johnson for example would have handled it and look at the way they're handled i mean going around talking about you know you're gonna get murdered you're gonna get raped and mm -hmm. uh, i mean i just what's wrong with just saying this is a problem we need to fix it here's why we need to fix it and here's how we want to fix it uh, i mean do you really have to bring up murder and rape and all this and by the way, all of these cases that they have, the perpetrator was found, arrested, you, you know, prosecuted. I mean, the justice system is doing what, I mean, they're, if they're committing crimes, they're getting caught because we know about them. But obviously don't think that it's, you know, everyone, they just act like everyone in America is imminently going to be a victim of a violent yeah, crime. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. That's you how know, it's At the crazy. hands of a illegal immigrant. Oh my God, believe the well, house. You know? All that fear, right? Control right. everybody by fear. And, you know, I don't live in an area, and I certainly don't work in an area that's immune from immigrant. I mean, it's not as if, oh, that's easy for you to say. I bet where you live, you know, it's all white people. Well, no, not really. Where I work in Columbus is, you know, the plant that I just left, I mean, it's pretty diverse. You know, as I left today, they're building a prayer room and, and a rush to get it ready before Ramadan for our Muslim contingent. So uh, because we have a ton of African Im immigrants working who are of the, you know, Islamic persuasion. So very diverse. I, I mean, you know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not clueless on this stuff, but. I don't walk around in fear. I mean, you know, that's what I don't get. I mean, I just don't understand how what they're selling nonstop, 24 hours a day, is fear and hatred and, you know, this overblown narrative that every single part of the country is in decline. And our greatest leaders sold i shouldn't say sold preach the opposite you know and rode that to success and the country benefited from it so i i hope it doesn't work anyway we got our theme song playing thank you so much for doing what you did tonight for me josh i right. really appreciate it just i wasn't in i was too upset to be in a mood to do a show and you were here and you did a great job of it from what i heard i heard it on and off you know no uh, problem. But, uh, anyway, a lot uh, of participation in that. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it sounded great. It sounded great. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Josh Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And give him a big appreciation. Hey, Adrian, how are you? There she is. There's. Uh, I'm, wish, I'm, I'm hoping you find good news on Monday, Alex. Well, who knows? Uh, I, you know, I, 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 I look at stuff and I don't know what it means, you know? And no. I always am um, uh, thinking of the worst. 
Whatever. Ask the doctor. Anyway, to explain it uh, to you. Thanks to uh, thanks to Brian Neary for joining us this evening, and thank you, Alan, for sticking with us tonight. Kevin, nice to have you joining in, and Tony, of course, always a pleasure. Or should I say that? Anyway, I, that would only encourage you. Anyway, everybody, will you give a big wave goodbye? And I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And thanks to Josh Wheeler again for holding down the fort for me because I just wasn't feeling emotionally well tonight. So, anyway, uh, stay tuned now for uh, Amy Manuel. She'll be next here with the uh, intersection. And uh, she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you on Monday, uh, hopefully with some better news. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the uh, Monday uh, pop-up show. So we'll see you then. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.